Welcome everyone, welcome to The Crowned Life. And today I'm gonna to share with you secret ways to slow and reverse aging naturally. Especially if you're over 40, this is gonna be handy for you or you're you know, soon to be 40, very handy for you. Even if you're younger, um, this is gonna help because I mean, some of the things that I'm gonna share with you, I started doing in my 20s. And for those of you who don't know, I am 45. So um, mother of three. And I get complimented a lot and told that I don't look like I'm 45. I don't look like I'm the mother of three. And um, I'll share with you, you know, what I've been doing all these years, what I've been doing in my 20s, 30s, 40s to slow and reverse aging naturally. And some of the things are, you know, like I said, things I've been doing for decades, um, other things I've been doing for years, other things I've been doing most recently. And then even now I'm just learning new things um, that I will soon be implementing because I keep learning all the time how to kick it up a few more notches. So this three part series is gonna get broken down into three sections having to do with first, in this video, we're gonna talk about nutrition, what to eat, what not to eat. And the second part, which I'll release uh, next week, um, will have to do with exercise. Believe it or not, and I'm just now learning there are certain things um, that you can do, specific ways to exercise that not only help you balance hormones when you're over 40, but also they help you to kickstart um, and increase human growth hormone, which is what you know we had when we were young. <laughs> so um, I will share that with you um, next week. And then um, in week three, we'll talk about you know makeup and skincare. And to me, it's in that order because it's in the order of importance. Believe it or not, in my opinion, based on what I've studied and in my own personal experience, the most critical thing is what you are eating because if you're putting, you know, death into your body, um, you're you're going to have, you're gonna look like death sooner than later in life, okay? Um, it's really important that you're putting life into your body, live, active nutrients, enzymes, things that are nutrient dense. Um, if you want to look alive, young, radiant, you've got to put that into your body. We'll talk more about that in this episode, but the key is that you stop cellular decay from the inside out. And so a lot of you, if you're seeing, um, you know, a lot of advanced aging on the outside, it is um, likely because you're not tending to this most critical thing. And a lot of people have been fooled, unfortunately, uh, by the beauty industry to think that, you know, the most important thing is uh, skincare and makeup, that you're gonna be able to fight aging with cosmetics and creams. And yes, there are things you can do. We will talk about that in the third part of this series. But, you know, if you are doing things um, that are, you know, taking the life from you on the inside out, I mean, it's going to show and um, that's really the most critical thing. And so if you want to make sure that you're being, by the way, that you're being uh, notified as I release these other um, segments within the series, make sure that you've subscribed and that you've activated the notification bell so that you're notified when I release um, part two and part three of this series, but <clears throat> going back to what I was saying earlier, um, this is the truth. If you think I look young for my age, I'm gonna tell you, most of my adult life, I fell asleep at night with cheap makeup on my face. And when I woke up, any skincare that I did was um, little or, you know, really nothing. Okay, some some mornings I just woke up and put more makeup, more cheap makeup back on my face. I'm going to tell you the truth, okay? And so I hope sharing this with you drives home the point that I'm trying to make about how important nutrition is. And I'm going to share some, um, you know, all throughout this series, including in this video, I'm going to share some products with you because I want to give you some actionable um, 
items that you can, you know, you can actually do something with what I'm saying, you know. Um, you don't have to, you know, buy anything. I don't want to also, I don't want to overwhelm you. I'm going to share a lot of product ideas with you. And it's not that you have to do all these things to achieve, you know, the results that I have, okay. Um, but I am trying to, I don't want to overwhelm you. I want to give you plenty of options. And, um, and, and if you want to know what the products are so you can take action with this information, the links will be down below. And of course, it helps me, you know. If you do purchase from those links, it, you know, I will get a little little bit of something from it and that will help myself and my family. So um, that said, let's let's talk about um, the big things that are going to interfere with everything I said, um, you know, because I'm going to talk about a lot of things of, you know, what to do with diet and exercise and makeup. OK. But I'm going to tell you, number one, if you're out all day long, every day, getting UV rays in your face, a uh, lot of sun exposure, more than 15 minutes of direct sunlight per day, that is going to advance aging. So it's really good, you know, to have a SPF, you know, um, in your, your foundation makeup. We'll talk about that in part three, but when we get into makeup, but, um, Better yet, just don't don't be like a sun worshiper, you know, like they were back in the 70s <laughs> and 80s when I was growing up, because there have been studies done showing that people who are in the sun all day, like let's say truck drivers, okay, there have been scientific studies showing that people who are, you know, professional commercial drivers, um, they're always getting this side of the face next to the window, right? The sun is coming through and they've been able to see that on that side of the face, there's advanced aging more so than this face. So it's really important, the UV rays, um, you know, it's good to get your vitamin D from the sun, all natural, direct sunlight, you know, there's a lot of benefits to that. But if you're doing excessive hours of direct sunlight day after day after day, it's, it's going to age you, okay? Also, smoking. Um, that advances aging as well. Um, it grays your skin. There's a lot of uh, images that you can see of people even quitting smoking, okay, for a few months. There's going to be immediate uh, results where that grain goes away and um, your skin starts looking more supple and more young, okay? So, um, Another thing is, and you know, we don't really need to say this, this is kind of the obvious, but let's go on and put it out there. People who have substance abuse problems, uh, meth addictions that rapidly accelerate aging, and um, I've seen it before. You, you don't have to be a psychic to see what's going on with some people. They can look um, very thin, you know, from behind, because when they've been on drugs, they look like, oh, they look so skinny and everything. But when they turn around and you see their face, you can see it. You can see the smoking, you can see the meth addiction. Um, there's telltale signs and it's just going to advance aging. So uh, I think somebody told me at one point that um, meth contains the, the way that it is created is through some use of battery acid or something. And that's what people are putting into their body. Y'all can correct me down below in the comments if you want. Um, I, I have no experience with it. So <laughs> if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm glad to be wrong because, you know, I'm just saying I, I, I don't I don't fool around with that. Um, if you put garbage in, you, you're going to get garbage out. OK, and if you're going to slow kill yourself with smoking, and drugging, it's it's going to show on your face and people can see it. Um, and f another thing is consuming nutrient dead food, okay? I found a woman on the internet many, many years ago, uh, probably about 10 years ago, I think I found her. She's on YouTube. I will probably link a video to her down below. Um, she's known as the ageless woman and this lady is like a grandma, but she looks younger than me and um, she has been eating raw, a raw vegan diet for the last 30 years 
And even though I'm not, you know, vegan, vegetarian, seeing her example really um, made an impression upon me that I needed to um, reduce my meat intake. I needed to make sure that if I am consuming meat, it's higher quality. We're going to talk about that in this episode. And that what I need to do is increase my intake of raw, um, whole foods uh, to put those active live enzymes, to put that life back into my body so that I look young again. And um, I think, I, like I said, I found out about her, you know, 10 years ago. And even though I haven't gone quite at the level that she's at, I have really... Um, made a lot of changes because of her. Her story is very inspirational to me. Um, and finally, you know, dehydration. I'm going to say that, you know, a lack of water and people who are chugging down sodas all day, dear God, you are rotting your teeth out. Um, smoking does that as well. It accelerates tooth decay. Um, the, the sodas, um, you know, contain an acid that leach calcium from your bones, not just the teeth, but really bad for, you know, if you're trying to prevent osteoporosis later in life and joint problems later in life, you don't want to do this. It dehydrates you. Um, that again is going to make you look fatigued, fatigued, feel fatigued. It's all the sugar, all the teaspoons of sugar that they're putting into the sodas are going to wreak havoc on your gut health, and then you're not gonna be able to process and digest foods um, in an efficient way. And then, you know, you, you when you can't absorb nutrients properly, um, you know, then that just kind of defeats everything I just said about eating well, right? <laughs> All right, so, um, the main message here, like I said, it's it's going to sound really blunt and gruesome, but I've had this theory for a long time. The main takeaway here is that if you don't want to look like death, then don't put death in your body. It's that simple. Um, if you want to look like death, keep putting death in your body. And what is death? Death is the, um, the smoking the meth addictions, the, the chemical abuse addictions, addictions to sugar, um, and, and consu consuming um, highly addictive foods that are nutrient dense, okay? So before I outline all the stuff that you know you're not supposed to eat, which I'm gonna go over, okay? But let's first talk about what you can eat, all right? Because I, I prefer to go in that order so you don't feel like, damn, I can't eat anything, what can I eat, right? <laughs> And a lot of you already know what you're not supposed to be eating. You just don't know what to eat. And so uh, let's talk about that. Um, I, I'm going to talk about superfoods, nutrient-dense foods. I'm going to talk about anti-aging foods, foods that are high in antioxidants, um, foods that support your digestive system, pure whole foods, non-inflammatory foods. Those are the foods that I'm going to cover here. So superfoods um, that are nutrient dense. Um, these will be foods that are like high in omega-3s, such as avocados, Brussels sprouts, chia seeds, cauliflower, fish oil, hemp seeds, salmon, spinach, tuna, walnuts. And um, there is a great channel here on YouTube. I think it's called Superfoods. I'll put the link down below. Um, if you don't know how to purchase these type of foods, you know how to select them in the produce section, or um, you don't know how to shop for these items, you don't know how to prepare them, it's a great channel to educate you on how to implement more superfoods into your diet to get a boost of nutrients. Now, in terms of anti-aging, foods that are high in antioxidants, because it's the oxidization of cells that, uh, you know, um, amount to a lot of, of decay, okay? Um, well, you would want to consume foods like, kind of like what I mentioned earlier, but, you know, the avocados are, you know, um, high in antioxidants, but also blueberries, coconut water, 
green tea, again, the fish oil, lemons, olives, um, or extra virgin olive oil, pomegranates, walnuts, again, really good. And um, lately I have been getting into collagen, okay, uh, particularly um, beef-based collagen. And there are all kinds of different ways that you can supplement, um, like just buying um, beef bone broth, and it's really good for um, your hair and your nails and your gut lining and helping you to digest your food. Um, you can buy all kinds of different supplements if you don't want to do the um, bone-based uh, beef broth, okay? Um, and they even have, by the way, soups that you can buy that are pre-made with the bone broth, okay? Um, but there's all kinds of little um, products that you can add to your shakes and your smoothies or your coffee in the morning or hot tea. Um, those are ways that you can get in. You could, you could do supplements, okay? There's, there's all kinds. I'm constantly finding new products coming out um, with the collagen. Um, there's even got these little chews that I've, I've tried before. I'm not a huge fan of the chews. I mean, they're okay. Um, I will tell you when I supplement with collagen, my nails are not brittle. They don't break off easily. My hair, my skin, my everything looks, yeah. Um, now, at the bone broths, by the way, are not only a good source of collagen, but, you know, it's, it's because of the collagen, it's a good way to... Um, eat a food that is supporting your digestive system and some other ideas along those lines would be like, you know, aloe vera. Sometimes if I'm making smoothies, I've put um, pure uh, aloe vera juice in my smoothies, maybe a tablespoon um, per, you know, eight ounce glass in a smoothie. And um, usually you can buy that aloe vera on the juicing aisle it's along with a, a lot of other juices okay but you know especially if you're at a higher end grocery store you you can find really good quality 100 percent organic aloe vera juice and add it to your drinks and you're really not even going to taste it if some of y'all are grossed out by that you, you don't even taste it it's so little but it it, it hydrates um your um, your skin, your tissues internally and externally. Um, also probiotics. I've been getting into more of those. I mean, a lot of people are told to, you know, consume yogurt because they're high in, in probiotics. The problem is a lot of conventional yogurt contains a lot, a lot of sugar, which is not good for you. And so, um, and then also dairy, which we're going to talk about that in a moment. A better way to get your probiotics is through eating sauerkraut. I know some of you are like, what? Gross. I got a great recipe if any of y'all are interested in that. <laughs> um, artichokes, artichoke hearts, love those. My gosh, I could come up with a million ways to eat those. And asparagus, a real simple recipe, just, you know, clean them off. Uh, break off the ends and, you know, um, broil them in the oven with some extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper, super simple, 350 degrees for 20 minutes, and man, it's amazing. Um, and if you think you don't like asparagus, let me tell you, I got a child to beg me for my asparagus <laughs> uh, who came from a home where they didn't eat vegetables. And I know her parents were shocked, like, what? Okay, I'm telling you, it's a really good recipe. All right, moving on to more um, foods that support your digestive system. Hot teas, like licorice root. I know some of you are like, what? I mean, even when I bought it, I'm like, I don't know about this. It tastes great. I was just shocked. It's really sweet but naturally sweet. Um, and same with peppermint. Peppermint is great for also getting down the inflammation, if, if we're gonna talk about that in a moment, okay? But um, those hot teas are also gonna aid in digestion. They're, they're anti-inflammatory, but because uh, they're, they're hot teas, they help you to digest and move food along, you know, because sometimes, you know, if you're drinking a lot of cold drinks and stuff, it, it cannot be helpful with, you know, the digestion process. Things can kind of coagulate and it's harder to break things down. And um, 
pure whole foods. That's another topic here. Buying non-GMO, okay? I know there's a lot of controversy about it. Um, I have been trying to buy non-GMO certified project, I think is what it's called. I've been buying that for like things, products with that label for, I don't know, about like five years. I think I might've started integrating it more like in 2012, okay? Um, a lot of the products that are not labeled as non-GMO, you can almost guarantee they are genetically modified, okay? And unfortunately, regardless of where you stand on the, you know, beliefs of science and genetic modification and engineering of our food, which really has not been adequately tested, it's a new advent, right? Um, regardless of where you stand on that, th these foods, they use a lot of uh, pesticides, okay? And, and, and a lot of those pesticides have been scientifically proven to be carcinogenic. And so, you know, cancer causing, basically. So um, personally, I just, I, I haven't been eating GMOs as much as I can help it. I mean, I'm sure, you know, stuff happens, right? And I'm not a legalist, I'm not a Puritan. But as much as I can help it, I do buy non-GMO to avoid those pesticides. And I buy organic as well. And if you're saying to me, well, you know, I can't afford that, then look, I've been there and I had to make some tough choices in my life um, where, you know, I can't get everything organic, but I will tell you, know the dirty dozen, know the foods that you absolutely don't want to compromise on getting organic, like things that have appeal to them, like an... Um, an orange or a banana or something, you can kind of get away with that, all right? But something like a strawberry or a tomato that does not have a peel, and you're gonna be eating that exterior that, you know, that has gotten direct exposure to pesticides, you don't wanna eat it. And if you have no other choice, wash them off really good as much as you can. Um, but know the dirty dozen and, um, also uh, try to avoid antibi antibiotics and hormones uh, that they're putting in the dairy and the meat supply. Um, again, this is something where it's like, if you can't quite afford to buy organic milk or um, dairy, then you, you need to, and, and, and meat as well. You know, I went through a time like that. I was like, well, you know, I've got three daughters and I don't want my little girls getting all these, all this estrogen in their system at a young age causing premature puberty, onset of puberty, right? Um, and, you know, all the other bad things that come along with so many people right now that are dealing with estrogen dominance, okay? Really bad health stuff because of estrogen dominance, because of all the estrogen coming in through, through our food supply and so you know but it would, if, if if you can't really get everything organic you can't quite afford that then you know you, where are you going to draw the line and for me back in the day i said well i can't afford you know organic meat but i'm definitely not going to be buying um non-organic milk for my kids um and you know non non-organic um eggs, you know, and I would buy the cage free and um, the free roaming, you know, no antibiotics, nor no hormones ever with the eggs and the, the cow's milk. Okay, now I will say most recently, I have we have gotten completely off of dairy um, for, you know, reasons I'll talk about later. But um, this is a way if, if you can get your if you can wean yourself and or your family your children off of it it took me a while to wean my kids off of cow's milk um but i did it i slowly started incorporating more almond milk more coconut milk i started switching to almond milk coffee creamer in the morning and you know now we have gotten we don't we haven't bought cow's milk in months if we want ice cream we get coconut milk based ice cream if we want butter we get ghee which has had the lactose removed um, so 
you know, do what you can when you can to the best of your ability. Um, I haven't always, like I said, obvi I've, obviously I wasn't always perfect in my performance, right? Um, but as you can do better, do, do better. Start somewhere. Also, um, with the meat, you know, if you can, reducing your meat intake is going to actually save you a lot of money. Because if you look at that grocery bill, what's really costing people the most is meat. And unfortunately, there are, you know, studies out there that show that high meat intake is associated with a lot of the diseases that people are dealing with. There's a there is a documentary you can watch called, uh, I think it's Forks Over Knives, and they talk about all the scientific research that has shown um, high meat intake to be associated with high, you know, risk of, of cancer. And especially, you know, pork and shellfish, I, I would say for the last 20 years, I have tried to abstain from it. Again, I'm not a legalist. If somebody orders a pizza and there's pepperoni on it, I, I eat it, you know. Um, if somebody makes bacon, I'm going to eat it, you know, but um, generally speaking, I don't buy pork and I don't buy shellfish. Um, I try to abstain from it because these are lower quality meats. They're bottom feeders. Think about it. Um, pigs are filthy. They'll eat just about anything. They're very non-discriminating about what they consume shellfish are you know the vacuum cleaners of the ocean they are consuming things to filtrate the things in the water that are not you know what i'm saying it's like and i've even heard lobsters for example something that we can consider a very expensive food um I've heard those, I've heard lobsters likened to being uh, the cockroaches of the ocean. Think about it. They have an exoskeleton just like a cockroach, okay? So, you know, it, it's your choice. But as for me, you want to know, again, how do I not look like I'm 45 when I'm 45? It's because I don't eat that stuff and I haven't for the last 20 years. Yes, I have made exceptions here and there because I'm not a Puritan or a legalist, but you know, if you come to my home, I will tell you nine and a half times out of 10, you're not gonna see pork or shellfish in my house. You're just not. Um, what you will see is if I do have fish, it's gonna be wild caught, not farm raised, um, preferably you know, higher grade, you know, nutrient dense fish like salmon, tuna, and, you know, if we are getting um, chicken, it's free range, cage free, antibiotic, hormone free. And um, if it's beef, it's going to be grass fed. And I'm recently learning about now look for grass finished. I've never seen this on the label before, but now it's a new thing coming out. So, you know, apparently that's, see, there's always, you can come up higher, all right? Uh, don't get intimidated by this stuff if you're like, damn, I am so far off point. Or that shit's expensive. How do I do that? You know, um, do what you can when you can to the best of your ability. And, and, you know, we're human and that's all we can do, you know? And I didn't, I didn't get where I'm at overnight. This is 20 years of getting educated and fine tuning and stepping up my game year by year. Um, um, and especially if you are coming from a background of having a standard American diet, which I, I, you know, I was raised with that, you know, canned vegetables and boxed, you know, hamburger helper, stove top stuffing, you know, that kind of, you know, Betty Crocker cake mixes. I mean, we were raised on that margarine, you know, <laughs> okay. So I had uh, quite the learning curve to learn how, how do I prepare these foods? Um, how do I make them palatable? How do I make them appealing to my children so that they want to eat them and they don't push the food away? And they actually asked me, hey, can you make that again? It took quite the learning curve. So, you know, be delicate with yourself in your process, wherever you're at in this, okay? Finally, I'm going to talk about, you know, on, on the list of things to eat, um, non-inflammatory foods. Um, 
a lot of you are eating foods that cause inflammation in your body and it makes your skin really puffy and I've dealt with it. I've really been working on this. I first became aware of it in 2012, but I did not understand the level of effort that I needed to apply to really wrangle this issue in. And it's only until recently that I got super aggressive and then I really started getting control of it. But yeah, every so often I backslide and I eat a bunch of foods that I'm about to tell you about, um, you know, that are highly inflammatory and my face will puff up, my gut will puff up and you would think I'm like 10 pounds heavier than I am. And then, you know, ugh. <laughs> like that, you know, so, um, and then I look older and fatigued and all of this, okay, because the um, inflammation in my body is screaming out, stop, stop putting this in us, right, okay, so non-inflammatory foods that you should be eating are healthy sugar alternatives like monk fruit, stevia, coconut sugar, I've been using coconut sugar and stevia for a while, I just recently um, bought and started experimenting with monk fruit, which you can use exactly like, you know, sugar. If you, if you're, let's say you're baking a cake and it calls for a cup of sugar, you can do exactly a cup of monk fruit. It's easy, um, to make that switch, um, in that way. Okay. Um, do they sound, do they taste exactly like sugar? They, they taste pretty darn close, but if you are a sugar addict, when you drink this stuff, your body's going to be like, what the hell was that? Give me what I'm looking for. Cause you are addicted. You are addicted. And, um, for example, I'm going to tell you if I'm craving a soda, but I don't want all that sugar, I'm going to get a soda that has stevia in it. But you try to serve that up to somebody who's chugging down sodas every day, they're going to be like, Bleh. but now I'm used to it. I mean, I, I am now like if I drink a regular soda, I, I, it's too much. It's like cough syrup to drink regular soda now because I have, um, gotten off that sugar addiction and, um, I've gotten used to that taste and, and now I, I like it. And so do my kids. So, um, healthy saturated fats as well, like avocado, coconut, olive oils. Be careful because there are a lot of unhealthy saturated fats in salad dressings. And so it, this can be hard to find unless you're buying the higher end, um, brands like Bragg's, um, and, Primal Kitchen and Chosen Kitchen. Um, product links down below for that, just to give you an idea of what you can work with that don't that do have the healthy um, saturated fats. Also, dark chocolate is good to consume if it has over 50% cacao and it's sweetened with um, healthy sugars such as stevia, like I mentioned. Um, or, you know, other, other uh, healthy sugar alternatives, um, then that's going to be a good way to kind of indulge your sweet tooth if you have one. And um, there's a lot of brands out there that, that offer, you know, good dark chocolate like Lily's and Eating Evolved and um, gluten-free bread, uh, crackers, and pasta. Um, a lot of people are gluten intolerant and they don't even know it. And I'm going to be honest, even how honest moment I used to laugh and think, what the heck is wrong with people? Everybody thinks they're gluten intolerant these days. You know, I never had a problem with it. And now I'm realizing it's, yeah, because when you're young, but you keep putting that in your system and then you reach a breaking point in your, you know, 30s, 40s, where it's just your body says enough. And yeah, I know it's hitting people at a younger age now because maybe they're they're consuming too much of that. They're too much gluten. And also they're putting gluten in a lot of stuff that they weren't before. So um, I did not realize, I didn't get corrected on this until last late last year when my daughter had a food sensitivity test. And she was 14 at the time. She's 15 now. But we were trying to figure out why did she keep having allergic reactions? Why was she having breakouts in her skin? And 
when we got the food allergy or food sensitivity test back, it came back that she was not supposed to be eating gluten, wheat, garlic. Um, sorry if you can hear that, it's my dog. Wasn't supposed to be consuming eggs, um, cow's milk. And I kind of was like, whoa, where did this come from? Because I was not ever aware that anybody in our family had any food sensitivities. Again, then again, we were never really tested. Um, but I was having a lot of health problems also. And I thought, well, I'm going to support her. And I'm also going to see, you know, we share DNA. So I'm going to see if if me following her diet helps me to clear up some of my health issues. And what do you know, lo and behold, as soon as I got the gluten out, I had started getting things clearing up with my skin and all kinds of other issues started clearing up for me. Um, and I'll talk more about that later. But yeah, I, I had since 2017, I had a, a rash right here that I like a breakout and I could never get rid of it, never get rid of it. And when I finally got off of the gluten and the dairy, um, completely off of cow's milk, um, which was hard, not easy. These are addictions, people. Um, but when you finally break the addiction, then you realize how unhealthy you were. You were just so used to these. You, it was your normal, you know. And so I do want to encourage you to, um, you know, uh, look for gluten-free bread, crackers, pasta. Um, some of it might seem weird to you. I want to put some product links down below that, that have been recommended to me and that I recommend. Um, and uh, hopefully that helps. Also healthy grain alternatives. Um, you know, consuming almond, brown rice, cassava, and oat flours. Um, are going to be better for you than um, white flour. And I thought for a long time I was doing well because I would buy, for years I would buy unbleached white flour and I, or I would buy wheat flour, you know, and I would buy organic. And, and I thought, oh, I'm being really healthy, but no, I'm finding out now, ooh, uh, just get off of all of that. Um, and so we're learning, we've been learning how to cook with these alternative grains especially since my middle daughter started getting, you know, having some dental issues. And I started researching that on how to prevent and heal cavities. If y'all want to know more about that, put a comment down below and I might do, you know, a video on that for those of you who are interested. But one of the main things is a high grain diet. So in order to heal and prevent cavities, we just started really backing off of these grains, um, not only to support my younger daughter with her food sensitivities and my health issues, but to help the middle daughter with these dental issues. So um, healthy grain alternatives and even like, um, you know, um, quinoa, brown rice, basmati rice, jasmine rice, these will be good alternatives. Also healthy saturated fats, um, grass-fed um, ghee, like I mentioned before, which is butter, clarified butter that has had the lactose removed from it. Um, recently, I've been hearing about people using um, fats uh, to cook with like um, Epic brand grass-fed duck fat. No, I'm not getting any endorsements from these people or, you know, but I, I'm just, I've been hearing and it, it seems weird, but I'm going to try it, you know, because I do stuff like that. I experiment. So um, I've also heard about beef tallow bison. And um, if you were to use like a palm oil, red palm oil, um, any other palm oil is just going to be oof but um, red palm oil would be good, um, but unfortunately it's expensive, so uh, maybe go for <laughs> something cheaper like olive oil, extra virgin olive oil or ghee. Um, all right, and then the grass-fed beef that I mentioned earlier, um, grass-fed and finished. I've been buying grass-fed for quite some time now, several years, but I'm now learning about grass-finished. Uh, but I haven't been able to find any where I live. So if you've got some at the store, that would be something good to um, pick up. And then finally, the healthy dairy alternatives that I was talking about. That ghee, it helps you grow healthy gut bacteria. And, um, you know, that would be a good alternative to butter. And uh, 
you know, the coconut and almond milks are good, you know, not just for replacing cow's milk or coffee creamer, but also, you know, in your ice cream to get the coconut milk based. And I love it. I really do. One of my favorite things is to get coconut flavored uh, coconut milk. And then I put some uh, cacao nibs and some almond slivers in there and that's like ice cream if i'm really craving something sweet and decadent and you know the cacao is a super food and um, almonds are very good for you as well high in niacin and then you're getting that coconut coconut in a uh, ice cream that's coconut milk based so all of it again super food again very healthy very healthy now, what you don't want to eat, um, some of you, you already know this, but in case you don't, let's just cover it here. Sugars, white refined sugars, aspartame, NutraSweet, Splenda, sucralose. Um, you know, even in smoothies, and I'm even learning with fruit infused water, they can just have too much sugar. Um, and items that are labeled sugar-free, watch out for that because they can have these man-made sugars in them and the body really cannot easily digest these kind of sugars. And so I'm even hearing, you know, a lot of sources saying, particularly if you're trying to lose some weight, okay, um, you wanna back off on your intake of, of even fruit, you know, down to just one piece of fruit a day. And I saw that from my daughter when we were working on trying to heal a cavity. Um, the same line of advice, no more than one piece of fruit per day. And I remember I was talking to one guy, um, a guy that I used to work with from Africa, and he's like, what is this with American culture? You've always got to have sweets and desserts. And he said, you know, in my country, um, you know, we, we very rarely, if ever, have desserts. I mean, to have fruit was like a dessert, you know? <laughs> and I'm starting to realize again, you know, standard American diet is not all that it's cracked up to be. We consume, we consume too much meat, too much sugar, both of which are associated with high rates of disease. So, um, milk chocolate, you know? Um, people, you know, men, I mentioned earlier, get the dark chocolate. Well, a lot of y'all don't like that because it's got a sharp, um, some say bitter taste to it. Um, anything with less than 50% cacao in it and sweetened with unhealthy sugars, you want to avoid it. It's not going to be good for you. Um, I love to find Clarence dark chocolate, you know. I've even got a little piece right here at my desk. If I'm, you know, just one little bite and it really satisfies you just to get one little bite and it's high in antioxidants. But some people, they want to gorge on the milk chocolate and it doesn't, it doesn't have the health benefits that the dark chocolate have. And so if you're like, yeah, but I don't like that. Well, learn to like it. You know, you, you have to, some of these foods, um, you like them because there's a familiarity to them and it's psychological, okay? And once you start acclimating to this new, you start acquiring a taste for this new thing, then you're not gonna wanna go back to the old. It's gonna taste like, you know, kinda like I said, um, when you, you finally switch to sodas that are not full of sugar and they are, they're full of stevia, um, you, you try to go back to that old stuff and it's just gonna taste like garbage to you. You're gonna taste the garbage. But while you're addicted, it's, oh, yeah, 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 give it to me, you know? <laughs> so um, other things you want to avoid, unhealthy saturated fats like margarine, palm oil, shortening. Remember, the only exception is red palm oil, but super expensive. So, you know, at your own risk, see what you're going to do. But uh, the grain, the grain fed beef is something you want to avoid. Remember, this is in contrast to grass fed beef. Um, grain fed beef usually has um, higher omega sixes in their diet. Those cows are fed a lot of grains in their diet, which gives them a higher omega sixes. They get transferred onto you. And unfortunately, if you're taking in a lot of omega-6s, then that suppresses your absorption of the healthier omega-3s. 
Uh, the grains and gluten that I mentioned earlier that you want to avoid. Um, many people who are over 40 years old are having issues with their gut. Like I said before, it's contributing also to dental decay because of all these grains. We eat too much grains, okay? The dairy, if you're gonna consume dairy, um, yeah, try to get, you know, hormone free, but you gotta know that even hormone, you know, RS. RBST free um, organic cheese or dairy, it still contains hormones, right? Because, you know, that's how, how, do, how does the body produce, how does uh, milk, how does the body uh, lactate? It's through hormones. So you're going to get it in, in any kind of um, cow's milk. So if you are going to consume any types of cheeses, um, organic or not, usually the harder the cheese, the less inflammatory it is. And if you want to get um, a goat's milk based cheese like feta, um, it can be um, easier for the body to digest. Also, caffeine, I don't know if you've noticed as, as I've gotten older and I've had girlfriends have told me that they've gone through the same thing, um, we become a lot more sensitive to caffeine. Um, so really, you probably want to limit it to one cup per day, if at all. Um, by the way, I wrote a blog post on my website about how I quit coffee and what I am drinking now. Um, if you want to know more about how to quit coffee, but um, it, the thing is it increases cortisol levels and especially for women who are already dealing with a lot of stress. Um, studies have shown women deal with two times more stress than men and it, where does it go? Straight to the gut and you know we're going through all these hormonal changes in our 40s when we're premenopausal and you know you don't need that cortisol. It's very hard um, to process, um, very hard on, on the body, okay? So less caffeine, the better. Um, also avoid low quality carcinogenic meats, um, such as deli meats um, that contain nitrates and nitrites. Um, these are preservatives that are common in deli meats. If you're gonna buy deli meats, make sure the label says all natural, hormone free, um, um, but more specifically preservative free. Look on the ingredients list. Does it say nitrates or nitrites? If it does, put it back. You, you, the, when I say carcinogenic, for those of you who don't know what that means, cancer causing, linked to cancer, put it back. Pork, like I said, associated with higher rates of cancer. Um, yeah, if you're gonna buy hot dogs, uh, all beef, all beef and kosher, you know, is usually good. Shellfish, I mentioned that earlier, to stay away from these bottom feeders, these vacuum cleaners of the ocean, you don't wanna be putting that in your body. You want clean, pure food as much as possible. You also wanna avoid hormone disruptors, such as flax seeds and soy, omega-6s and dairy. Um, Flax seeds and soy, they are, uh, they contain phytoestrogens. These are, um, you know, things that mimic estrogen and the body can't really recognize it or they, it, the body recognizes it as estrogen because it mimics that and then you know, that kind of, that kills your testosterone levels. It, it really messes up the balance and um, yeah, so I don't do any soy. I've known about soy for probably 20 years. I've, I've abstained from that. I've never been a tofu person. Um, I've never bought soy milk. I, I just, if, if it can, and a lot of things can, they're putting soy in burgers, okay? I don't buy soy, but I mean, that's, you know, I just don't do any of that. Um, I avoid it like the plague. Um, much better to get, you know, your coconut milk or your almond milk if, instead of soy milk. Um, Omega-6s, um, these are also hormone disruptors. Remember I said that grain-fed beef cattle is fed a lot of grains that contain these omega-6s. These are oils such as uh, canola oil, safflower, safflower sunflower and uh, vegetable oils. These all trigger 
um, inflammation in the body and they compete with your healthy omega-3s which affect your hormones. And remember I said these, these omega-6s are found a lot in um, salad dressings and sauces and things like that. And so read the label and if you're seeing these different oils listed, don't buy them or if you're cooking with them, don't buy them, right? Back in the day, you know, when I remember in the 80s, we grew up with vegetable oil and then in the 90s found out that was bad and started cooking with canola oil. And now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we keep leveling up, but um, yeah, just avo avoid those if you can now. Um, and then dairy, like I mentioned before, avoid cow's milk if you can. Um, a lot of people don't know, you know, what cow's milk is for growing baby cows. And I've kind of thought for years, well, you want to look like a cow, keep drinking like a baby cow, you know, and, and think about this. It's hard on the body to digest. It really is because cows, did you know they have four, four stomachs to break down and process that food? And so we don't, we just have one. And so um, it just it, wean yourself off of cow's milk if, if at all possible. Um, also because of the hormones, um, make sure that if you're buying it, you're getting organic, raw, RSB, RBST free, hormone free milk if possible, but know that even then you're still getting some hormones. Um, all right, and finally avoid foods that bloat and cause gas. Mm. Yeah, what's doing that? Um, sodium from processed foods, not to be confused with healthy, all natural salts. Um, we're talking about the canned and boxed foods that, you know, are manufactured foods that contain high sodium levels. These can cause bloating and gas. Also raw broccoli, um, cabbage, and other cruciferous vegetables. Eating them raw, it, again, it's, it's hard for the body to break those down. Um, and so it's better if you're going to consume these cruciferous vegetables that you steam them instead of eating them raw. Also, food sensitivities to cow's milk like cheese, butter, ice cream, coffee creamer, eggs, beans. Um, these can cause gas. Yeah, some of you are wondering, like, what the heck is going on with me? Trust me, get off of that stuff and you're not going to be having problems anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, also, you know, I want to say um, in closing a couple, a couple tips about food storage. A lot of us have been using plastic containers, right? I remember, I guess since the, was in the 50s, they came out with Tupperware and or somewhere, you know, it was popular in the 70s and 80s. You know, a lot of people are using these plastics and then we start finding out about BPA free and, and I'm not, you know, switching to that. And now there's research showing that even the BPA free plastics are leaching um, phytoestrogens into the food, which, right, phytoestrogens mimic estrogen and are contributing to all these health issues people are having with estrogen dominance, hormone disruption. So what I've done is, you know, in my house, I've switched to glass containers when possible. And um, I'll have links down below. But yeah, if you're like, well, I can't afford all of that. Look, you can. You know, there's a lot of um, um, jars, you know, like using the, the old school um, jars, you know, with the Kerr brand and the Oh, who else? I'll put them down below. You just look at my links if you're interested. There's economical ways to do this, okay? And if you have more of a budget, then you can get, yeah, nicer stuff for, you know, glass food storage. But, um, you know, maybe just do a little bit at a time. Don't go all out at once, but a little here and there, start converting and making changes to go from the plastic to the glass. Um, how to eat, I wanna say, Know your food sensitivities, if at all possible. Take a food sensitivity test like my daughter took last year. Um, it's probably gonna tell you where, you know, it's gonna pinpoint exactly where the problems are. I'll put a link down below for that. Um, a lot of these things, all you do with a food sensitivity test, you can um, buy them. Um, well, we bought ours at Target um, just right off the shelf and took it home and, um, 
it's just did a pen prick of blood and sent in a blood sample and um, mailed it off and they had the results to us within like two to three weeks and um, very informative, very helpful, called and talked to us over the phone. But I'm serious, you don't have to make a doctor's appointment. You don't have to leave your house for this really. Um, and I think they're, they're about under $100 to get the lab tests done at home, you know, from your home um, and just ship it off in the mail like that. But that's gonna really help you pinpoint what is triggering a lot of the problems that you might be dealing with without even realizing it. Also, um, consider you know, your macros, your carbs, your fats, your proteins. I'm gonna put a link down below for a macro calculator and that's gonna help you understand specific to your age, your gender, your body type, um, your workout routine, how many carbs and fats and proteins should you be consuming every day? A lot of people don't know that. Um, and I'll talk more about that when we get into the exercise portion. So yeah, if you're wanting to like stay with me in this series, this is a homework assignment, okay? I'm gonna give you some homework assignment here. Uh, do the macro calculator on the link below. Some of you are wondering if you're trying to lose weight, what diet is best for you? Like I said, the macro calculator and getting a food sensitivity test is really gonna help you. But let me say specific to women over 40, this is something I've learned. Keto is really big right now. It's trending, it's kind of, I don't know, a fad, you know, and these things go, we've gotten all kinds of low carb and Atkins diet and South Beach diet and hell, my head's gonna spin from all these damn diets, <laughs> you know? But let me say that um, what I have learned is right now what's trending is keto and um, after doing further study, I have found that even though it is said to be one of the best diets for people over 40, it's low, no carb, and come to find out this is not so good if you are strength training. And, um, you know, strength training is really critical for women over 40. If you want to get that hor human growth hormone um, initiated, if you want to burn the most um, visceral fat, okay, um, you, you don't want to be doing keto on a strength training day. I'll talk more about that in the next segment, but um, you need a high carb diet if you are doing any kind of strength or weightlifting, which is really critical for women, come to find out. Um, but it also is gonna help you um, to build lean muscle and recharge your strength after doing that strength training. And um, some argue that keto is actually arguably disruptive to hormone and thyroid balance, and we wanna watch out for that. So um, next week in the next segment, I'm gonna talk more about diet in relation to working out and also doing intermittent fasting because that's something else that helps you burn more in targeted regions like the midsection where we tend to hold it a lot over 40 and it also is going to help you, like I said, to um, increase that human growth hormone that we had more of when we were younger. So kind of a motivator if you're thinking like, I'm not excited about intermittent fasting and I don't wanna do strength training. And um, look, I'm gonna make it easy for you and I'm gonna motivate you um, by <laughs> telling you, oh my gosh, so many anti-aging benefits in this. And so I hope you'll join me for that this, you know, this next week when I release that portion. In the meantime, links are down below, or you know, check out um, my blog at thecrownlife.com, um, and I will have links there as well. And remember, if you wanna be notified for when I release more information, make sure that you have subscribed and you've activated the bell for notifications. Until next time, wishing you guys all the best. Be blessed.